morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this worship service of Cleveland First Methodist Church. We are delighted that you are here today. I'm delighted I'm here today. <laughs> I'm your new pastor, Joe Gist, and my wife Kathy is here on the third row. Kathy, please stand. That people folks can see you. You will see her a little later and quite a bit. But uh, welcome. And we ask that you, if you've not already registered your attendance uh, in the pew pass, please do so. Your attendance is very important to us. <laughs> And uh, uh, I just wanted to say before Brian uh, gave our announcements, uh, a word of appreciation to the congregation for the warm welcome we have received. Uh, we've been here now just over a week, and it feels like we are already part of the community and the church here. Uh, the, the ladies of the church had this wonderful welcoming basket uh, waiting for us in, in the parsonage, and it was such a blessing. We have, we have used many of those uh, food uh, gift cards and certificates already, and uh, we haven't found a bad glass of tea anywhere in town. It, it's, it is so good to know you got sweet tea that's good sweet tea. So anyway, we're, we are we are delighted, and thank you so much for that. I, I've got to tell you, folks have been asking uh, very kindly how we're moving, you know, how's it going with the move in? We still got one pod left, but uh, uh, once that's in there, then things really start happening. Once we get that pot here this week, and uh, one of the things that uh, uh, that we've uh, become acquainted with that we don't have in North Texas is carpenter beans. <laughs> I have not seen a bee the size of a Buick before, <laughs> and, and we have a number of them swarming around our patio. They are loving that that uh, covered patio, and. Uh, uh, so Kathy, Kathy has found a home remedy. We, we're going to see if it works or not. Uh, but uh, so we're receiving a warm welcome by nature as well. That's what I guess I'm saying. Uh, those are all the things that, that I wanted to say again. Welcome to this worship service. Brian, I believe, has a few announcements for us. Please indicate on the attendance pad if you're planning to come to that. Uh, that will be followed by a choir practice. Roy and I have figured out that we will not be involved in that. Uh, uh, let's see, Thursday at 6 p.m., uh, God's Garden Club will meet, and we're preparing for a big church weekend. Uh, Saturday is going to be a work day from 8 until noon. Uh, please help if you can, if you can, please, please help if you can, join us if you can for that. And later today at 5, there's going to be a cookout followed by trivia. Now, I don't know if you came to trivia last time, but trivia was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I, we had uh, more fun than we should have, I guess. We <laughs> 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 could do that. Uh, but uh, next Sunday is our celebration Sunday. Now, y'all, yeah, we've been talking about this forever, forever, forever. You see this sheet right here. This sheet right here is, is, is kind of important. This is Bible information we need. If you are a member of the church already, you, by virtue of, of being here, then, then that's fine. We still need your information updated. Uh, if you're planning to join our family, we also need that information so we can get a good record of, what, of who we have, what we have, and, and vital information. There's a little information on there that's, that's not been provided before, and I've had some people ask me about the emergency contact. We don't plan on doing anything to you. <laughs> You're perfectly safe. But we felt like it was important that if something, God forbid, were to happen to you while you are here in worship, that we would have someone to call on your behalf. So we just we just thought that was a smart thing to do. So we ask that you, if you haven't filled one of those out, please do so. And you can place it in the box at the office, or you can just put it in the offering plate, whichever one you choose. Um, Mama Mia. Grace has been one of the lead performers in the Mama Mia play at the high school this past week. It also uh, goes next weekend from the 25th to the 28th. Uh, from what I understand, is that is she, she's doing wonderful in that. I'm not surprised at all. Not surprised. Very kind. And uh, finally, Yoma Brass uh, with our trumpeter Charles Aiken. 
We'll be performing today at Union Grove Church off Union Grove uh, off Campground Hall on this road. Uh, that's at 3 p.m. So if you get a chance to go and hear them, uh, they've been around a long time. Well, you, you, you know, Young Brass been around a long time. So uh, they're really good. So if you get a chance, okay, that's, that's really a nice afternoon. Are there any other announcements? Right. Tracy? On the, um, the Garden Club meeting on Thursday night, is, uh, the program is on herb gardening. So if anybody's interested in herbs, Joan Brown will be doing our program. Okay. I don't, I don't think, I've got one spot in my yard, I don't think I could grow cuts in. <laughs> okay. Any others? Yes, Bonnie. I really encourage everybody to go see Mama Mia <laughs> up at the high school. It is fantastic and you won't be disappointed. I'm sure, absolutely. I'm sure. <laughs> others? Okay. Okay. Well, let us do what we come here to do. Let us invite the Holy Spirit in and worship. Let's all join together and sing Sanctuary. <laughs>
this morning as we enter in our time of cares and concerns and praises. Um, I want us to keep aware of those that are on our on our constant cares and prayer list in our bulletin this morning. We uh, we have a lot, and it seems like sometimes that there's more than than our faith. But God has a purpose in, in everything that He does. And uh, this morning we uh, we want to we want to have praises as well. Uh, we have praises for our church. Uh, this morning I, I I'm so thankful for this church and for the path that it has taken and for the direction it is going. And you know you hear us talk a lot about Celebration Sunday. And it really is a time to celebrate. It's a time of renewal, a time of, of fellowship, and a time to start over. And we have that. Next Sunday, beginning next Sunday, we have that opportunity. And when I think of so many who don't have that, who have not been enlightened or don't have that available, it saddens my heart. We here today, Cleveland, First Methodist Church. We stand in awe of God's goodness. We, I really do. I just stand in awe of God's goodness with all that He's done, all that He has brought us, this place that He has brought us to today. I thank Him for that. I praise God for that. We have uh, quite a few on our prayer list this morning. Um, some of you will remember Margaret Dorsey. She's a longtime resident of White County. A lifetime resident of White County. Uh, she passed away this past week. Uh, she had been involved in Mossy Creek Church some. Uh, we lift her and her, her family up today. Uh, she passed away. Uh, we also lift up Barb, Lauren, and Isabel in the passing of George. Um, they have uh, a celebration of life scheduled for Saturday the 18th at 12 noon here in the Fellowship. Encourage you to we encourage you to come, uh, and we pray that God will just give you strength, uh, that He will help you adjust to this new normal. And uh, there's a lot of us here who have been through what they're going through right now, so we can not only sympathize but empathize, and we can give those words of comfort, and we can give those words of prayer. So I, I ask that we do that. Um, we also pray for Deborah Holder. Uh, she's a friend of Faith's. Uh, Faith Brooks from the 9 o'clock service. Uh, she has some heart issues. Uh, she's asking for prayer for her. Dina is asking for prayer for uh, Kim Besher. She, uh, he, that, that was placed on hospice. Been placed on hospice, so we pray for that family that they just, uh, God will just give them grace. Also for uh, Rick Blackburn. Uh, some of you here may know him. He's a, a lifetime resident of White County. Uh, he's been placed on hospice as well. And uh, uh, Kyan, I'm sorry. She spelled it wrong. It's Kyan Ky Ky Dorsey. Um, it's Isabel's classmate. And his mother passed away very unexpectedly. So we keep, uh, we keep these kids, especially uh, while they may be able to mold and able to bend, things affect them. <coughs> especially make sure that we keep them included in our prayers and know that God will just place his hand upon them and give them just that path that they need. Just that path that they need. Uh, we have some praises this morning. We have uh, Dennis Adler from the uh, Dennis from the nine o'clock service. He had uh, some facial surgery. Face cancer. Can't have I'm sorry, face cancer. And went back to the doctor and he's He's doing great. He's cancer free, so that's wonderful. We always want to hear that. Um, thank, I thank God today for this rain. <laughs> I thank him for this, for this liquid sunshine that we're getting. And I thank him for you today. I thank him for your presence today and, and for what he's doing in our lives <coughs> in the church. And let's just stay focused on what he's doing today. Are there any other concerns, cares? The family with Bill and Anna? Yes. Bill Allen. Uh, thank you, Bill Allen, for that. Um, Bill Allen. Bill's been, a, uh, Bill's been around here a long time. He passed away this past week and has a service upcoming, so we pray that you keep him and his family. <coughs> yes. I, 
Uh, pray for my sister, Karen Kasmer. She's in Michigan. Uh, she's in the facility uh, because of uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. And they are considering right now putting her into hospice. Okay. And her last name, I'm sorry? Kasmerik. <laughs> K-A-C-C-E-K. Her husband has been married 73 years. M-A-R-E-K. I didn't think that was a Cleveland. No, no. <laughs> Karen has married. I'm so sorry, David. I'm so, sorry. so, yes. Are there others? Yes, Russ. Ryan, I have praise. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I stood before you and asked you all for your prayers for some tests I was undergoing. I'm happy to report that all of the tests were negative. Everything is clear. So, thank you all for your prayers. And, uh, and I really appreciate it. Yes, Russ, I appreciate that. I, I, I really did. Thank you for thank you for telling us. And we got that text every night that, that his his test had come back negative. So he said he just the right way. You did right. You did good. God was good. So we're glad. Yes. I have a phrase. We yes. had all but one of our children last night gave us a 50th anniversary. Oh. Oh. I write slower than I talk, so bear with me. <laughs> Are there others? Would you bow with me, please? Most kind and gracious God, Father, we thank you with all our hearts that we are in your house today. Father, that you have brought us to this place where we can worship freely and give alms to you and give blessing and, and, and give praise to you and give honor to you for all that you do for us. And Father, in this moment, we ask that you help us move away everything that clogs our vision of you. Everything that causes us to have a stumbling block, let it be removed in this moment. And Father, let our vision that you have for us be clear. That you make the path clear for us that we may walk in your footsteps. That we may do the things that you have us to do. That we may leave this place today with a heart that's full of the Holy Spirit. Full of kindness, full of goodness, full of love. Father, help us to put those things in our lives that act as stumbling blocks aside. Help us to focus on your goodness and on your mercy and on your love. Father, these requests that we've sent up to you this morning, you know each and every one individually. And Father, we just ask this morning that you would put your hand upon them. That this, these, these families may feel your presence. May, may they feel the warmth of your breath. May they know your comfort. Father, we thank you today for this church. We thank you that in the midst of everything that could have happened, you sought to keep us together. And we praise you for that today. We thank you that you saw something in us that, that sometimes we didn't even see. You saw through the confusion. You saw through the words that were said. Father, we are thankful today that you seen through to our hearts. We give you praise for that today. And we thank you now for this path that we're on. We come to you with love and thanksgiving. Father, help us remember the words that Jesus taught his disciples when he said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Amen. Would you please stand and join me for the Apostles' Creed from page 691? I believe in God the Lord Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge those who can be in I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life, and the life that lasts.
scripture lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament book of Joshua, chapter 3. Early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left the Kenya Cove. They arrived at the banks of the Jordan River where they camped before crossing. Three days later, the Israelite officers went through the camp, giving these instructions to the people. When you see the Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, move out from your positions and follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. Stay about a half a mile behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the Ark. Make sure that you don't come any closer. Then Joshua told the people, Purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great and wonderful things among you. In the morning, Joshua said to the priest, Lift up the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people across the river. <coughs> and so they started and went ahead of the people. The Lord told Joshua, I will, Today I will begin to make you a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. They will know that I am with you just as I was with Moses. Give this command to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and stop there. So Joshua told the Israelites, Come and listen to what the Lord your God says. Today you will know that, God, that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites ahead of you. Look, the Ark of the Covenant which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth will lead you across the Jordan River. Now choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord and the Lord of all the earth, as soon as your feet touch the water, the flow of the water will be cut off upstream, and the water will stand up like a wall. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan, and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. It was the harvest season, and since the Jordan was overflowing its banks, as soon as the... Uh, as soon as the... As soon as the feet of the priest were carrying the ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point was <coughs> backing up a great distance away from a town called Adam, which is near Zerichon. And the water below that point flowed into the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then all the people crossed over the banks to the town of Jericho. Meanwhile, the priests who were carrying the ark of the covenant stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. They waited there until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brian. This is the story of a people on a journey forced to leave the land given them by God because of a devastating famine. Jacob, also known as Israel, his people, sought and found refuge in Egypt. Then, under the care of Jacob's favorite son, long thought dead, Joseph. With time, the Israelites flourished and multiplied in their adopted land, causing great jealousy and fear among the Egyptian people. That fear grew to rage and resentment, and the Israelites were pressed into slavery. After centuries of suffering and bondage, God heard the cry of his people and sent a Messiah and a man wanted for murder, Moses. With faith in God and with God's direction, Moses led the people out of Egypt and into the wilderness where, because of the people's rebellious and unfaithful nature, as they were a stiff-necked people, they wandered for 40 years. God could not find faith in that generation. And after those God had freed from slavery in Egypt had died, God then set his hand upon their sons and daughters, a generation in whom he found faithful hearts. Then with a new leader, Joshua, the nation of Israel found themselves 
at the very banks of the Jordan River. Only the river stood between them and the land of their forefathers, the land of God's promise, the land of milk and honey. Bow with me. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be a blessing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Can you see them standing on the banks of the Jordan? Shoulder to shoulder. The excitement and anticipation almost palatable. Can you see yourself standing there among them? They were ready to cross over, had been ready for days. Waiting for the word from Joshua to move forward and cross the river to the other side. Finally, the word swept through the camp like a desert fire. When you see the ark in the river, we move. <coughs> this generation had been brought up to be obedient to God and to follow God's direction, to follow God's word and God's leaders. In their deepest heart, this generation trusted God. They had come to know what the psalmist many centuries later would write. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. God would lead them over the Jordan to the land <coughs> he had promised. They had found God to be trustworthy. Trusting God had led them to this moment. This new generation was about to cross over into what was them, a new land, to see the dawning of a new day in the life of the people, a joyous day few could have imagined while still in the wilderness. Consecrate yourselves, Joshua told the people. Consecrate yourselves and tomorrow God will do amazing things among you. Now consecrate means to make holy, to set apart, to devote oneself to God. You are a people set apart as God's people, Joshua would say. Devote yourself to God. Make yourself holy in God's presence and see what God will do. When the time had come to cross, Joshua told the priest to take up the Ark of the Covenant and walk into the river. People followed the priests and the ark. The people figuratively and literally followed the word of God into the river. And by following God's word, by putting their faith and trust in God, and the leaders that God had set before them, God saw the faith of the people. And as soon as the feet of the priests stepped into the waters of the Jordan, the water upstream stopped flowing and backed up. And the water downstream continued to flow, leaving the riverbed dry. Now the writer tells us that Jordan was at a high water mark. But even at flood stages, the people probably could have crossed the Jordan River without too much difficulty on their own. The Jordan isn't exactly the Mississippi. Jordan isn't even the Chattahoochee. <laughs> the people could have crossed the Jordan without God's miracle. And entered the promised land, albeit they would have been a muddy and soggy side. They would have hardly even been noticed by those living on the other side. But God intervened on the behalf of the people he loved. And because God used the crossing to show his power, a power greater than nature itself, all the kings of the people that inhabited the land heard what God had done on their behalf and their hearts melted and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites your story too is the story of a people on a journey you as a congregation have recently gone through a wilderness time a great time of challenge a time of tumult standing on and for the biblical principles that uphold you and sustain you and give honor to God, you chose to depart a denomination that tragically has in many regards 
held those same biblical principles in disdain. A new day has dawned in the life of this congregation. You not only have with you a new pastor, but you also have a new faith family. You now belong to the global Methodist church. I believe God has ordained this new denomination to his glory. And as God went before the nation of Israel, before they crossed the other side of the Jordan, so God goes before us as we cross over into this new and unknown land, this land of promise, this land of milk and honey. In this passage from Joshua, we see that the people of Israel trusted God and God's word to lead them, to instruct them, to give them direction and to protect them in the challenges that were to come. It was a land of milk and honey. It was also the land of Jericho. And the people put themselves in God's hands. <laughs> having left the years of bondage in Egypt, having traveled for a period of testing and preparation in the wilderness where their hearts and spirits were honed and prepared for this very moment, this crossing. At the same time, real and symbolic, in the crossing of the Jordan into the new land, Israel put their trust in God and in God's promises. Because the people trusted God, God worked a miracle among the people. Folks, you have crossed your Jordan. You are on a new path, a path set by and blessed by God. And you are not alone on this journey. We now travel this journey together, following God's lead, following God's word, following the direction God sets before us. Through prayer and hard work, sacrifice, you have left Egypt and the wilderness behind you and crossed over to the other side. You didn't get this far without prayer. And many sacrificed greatly to get here. You sacrificed time and treasure. You sacrificed friendships. God has taken notice of your sacrifice and your faithfulness and will, I believe, bless you in your sacrifice. You will grow strong and more faithful in the days to come. And together, we will become a faithful witness to our families and our community and our friends in ways previously unavailable and unimaginable to us. That will be God's miracle worked among his people. And what we do, we will do together. And in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may have noticed on the front of your worship bowls in a phrase that follows my name. Minister among ministers. You can go ahead and see it. If you didn't, if you didn't look at the front of your bowl, you can do that now. Minister among ministers. Let me explain that. That's not just a tagline. That sums up how I approach ministry within a congregation. God calls his people, all his people, to be ministers to the world. He calls us all to make disciples of Jesus Christ and to teach and to baptize. And I believe that's called the Great Commission. We are all ministers among ministers. Each of us endowed with gifts and spiritual gifts that will edify the people of God and speak of God's love to and for a fallen world. <clears throat> Last week, Phil Dotson gave us an example of how a sculling crew has to pull together, how they have to row together to make the skull slice through the water with precision to go faster and faster to win the race. To be successful, it takes everyone in the boat rowing in the same direction. You didn't think I was listening, did you? <laughs> well, that's a really good metaphor for the church. A church is called to row in the same direction. 
Would we all agree on every issue? Be of like mind all the time? Probably not. But when we all place our faith in God and have faith that God has a purpose for this congregation, even one that we ourselves may not be able to see, then we are all rowing in the same direction. Phil doesn't know it, but he gave me my watchword for being your pastor. This paddle has a phrase on it. It says, CFMC, Cleveland First Methodist Church, rowing in the same direction. This paddle will hang over my desk in the pastor's office here at the church. And it'll be a reminder to me and to everyone who sees it that when God's people row together, when we pull together, even with the certainty of challenges, even in the face of adversity, even when we don't all agree 100% of the time, when we grow together, then we will fulfill our purpose to be a witness to Jesus Christ. In Cleveland, in Georgia, and to the world. When the people consecrate themselves before God. God has shown he will work miracles among his people. Next week we'll do just that. Next Sunday will be our celebration Sunday. And together we will consecrate ourselves as we reaffirm our vows of membership as we enter into the Global Methodist Church and consecrate this congregation to the glory of God as we celebrate God's faithfulness in getting us across the other side. It'll be a landmark event. It'll be a seminal event. As we step across the other side and enter into what may be an unknown land, it is still a land of promise. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. Next Sunday, we begin a new chapter in the life of Cleveland First Methodist Church. <clears throat> I look forward to seeing you there. Paddles are optional. <laughs> Bow with me. God of wonder, God of promise, God of miracles, work among your people this day and every day. We come before you as a people of faith. Placing ourselves and the future of this congregation and its ministries in your hands. Ready to enter that promised land. We thank you for those who got us to this point. The leaders of the church. The former pastor and all who worked with and prayed for this congregation. Through the challenges and trials of disaffiliation. We thank you for leading us through our wilderness. And for bringing us to this new day in our congregation. Amen. We'll ask, we'll ask the ushers to come forward as we prepare to receive God's tithes and our offerings. Bless us, O oh God, and all these gifts that we bring to you. Our presence, our prayers, and our gifts. May they be a blessing to others and bring Christ to the lives of people whom we may not even know. Bless your gifts as you have blessed, blessed your people, O oh God. Amen. This song has blessed my heart learning it. Um, and I hope it will bless yours too. My favorite line in the song is, Lord, all I need to know is you choose me. So I ask you to think about this week what that line means to you, what he has chosen you to be and to do.
scriptures, our church tradition, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. As our pastor, you're responsible for ensuring that the members are cared for by implementing a discipleship process focused on helping members to go on to perfection by loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, and by loving their neighbor as themselves. Pastor Joe Gist, you're charged with equipping all the members of a congregation to be in the ministry by meeting people at their point of need and offering them Jesus. Pastor Gist, do you reaffirm your commitment to ministry, to follow God, and to lead the Cleveland First Methodist Church? Today I affirm my, my commitment to serve Cleveland First Methodist Church by God's grace and the best of my ability. Church, do you affirm your commitment to support Pastor Gist as he guides us by God's grace to make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly? If you do, say we will. We will. We will. Amen. Take care. Amen. Before we sing our hymn of going forth, I want to extend the invitation. If you have not received Jesus Christ until this moment, until this hour of worshiping together, then we extend that invitation now. That is what the church is about. Offering Christ. And we will do that with every worship service as long as I am your pastor. So expect that. Expect to offer Christ to others. As you would expect me, I expect you to do that as well. If you'd like to make this church your church, then that invitation is extended as well. So as we remain standing and we sing our hymn of going forth, oh, praise the name, we invite you to come forward. If you need time at the prayer rail, this is a good time to do that, to give God thanks for where he has gotten us thus far or for whatever reason you may have on your heart. As we sing, come.